Benin, 112,600 square kilometers, about 8 million inhabitants. This is one of the world's smallest and least populated countries in Africa. But in Benin, greatness is nothing to do with size. For those who knew the country well, it used to be called Dahomey, the Latin Quarter of Africa. Despite the change of name, it remains the Latin Quarter of Africa. It is also the laboratory of democracy in Africa and one of the most stable countries on the continent. Such attributes inspire respect, but there is better to the country. First fascination. It stretches on 150 kilometers. On this coast, we will visit three cities including Grand Popo, Ouida, and Cotonou, which you can see right now. This is the main gateway to the country when you come by plane or by boat. It is also the business center par excellence. Over 60% of the country's businesses take place in this sprawling metropolis that is still very friendly. The port, it serves the hinterland countries, such as Niger and Burkina Faso, which trust the country's port completely because it meets the standards of the International Code for the Security of Ships and Port Facilities, ISPS. Even the giant Nigeria uses it frequently. Another site in Cotonou is its market. It is one of the largest and busiest markets in West Africa. If you're interested in good business, you will find it here. Everything is available in this market. You only need to pay a short visit to it to avoid any later regret. Cotonou is not the capital city of Benin, but it has the stuff of a capital city. Almost all institutions of the Republic are based here. The head offices of all international organizations are based in Cotonou. So do all embassies. Finally, Cotonou is the city of Semijan. These legendary motorbike taxis, whose drivers are dressed in yellow, facilitate your movements just for some coins. Ouida is my favorite. For me, this city epitomizes Benin. It is the symbol of pain and suffering because it was one of the top sites of the slave trade. Once in Benin, please, pay a visit to this city and especially go down the slave route starting from the slave auction place to the gate of no return, stopping at the tree of forgetfulness, Zomai Square, the memorial and the tree of return. It is an edifying pilgrimage worth doing although it is moving. To complete your visit to the sites of this shameful trade, you must come here and this former Portuguese fort Built in 1721, you will find an impressive collection of photographs and various objects on the slave trade. Wider is also the symbol of successful integration. Descendants of former slavers and former slaves live in perfect harmony. It's incredible but true. All cultures, indigenous and foreign, mingle well in this city. The fact that the Basilica and the Temple of the Pythons, which you can blithely visit, face each other is a proof of this peaceful coexistence. Knowing that the sand used in the construction of this church was brought from over 5 kilometers by voodoo worshippers, it becomes easier to guess that Ouida, the capital of voodoo, is tolerance in itself. After Ouida, westward further, you come to Grand Popo, the pearl of the coastal region. The first contact of Benin with the West happened here. Grand Popo is a town between two waters, the sea and a river. On your schedule, plan a night in Grand Popo. Besides the friendly hotels, you will experience the whistling of wind in the coconut trees and the sea lullaby to relax and soothe your nights.
Here, as in Widu, you have families bearing the names of former explorers and slavers such as Olympio, Johnson, Freitas Almeida, Benthic, Bovis, De Souza, Lemon, Gomez, Oliveira, Olivier de Montaguer, to name only those. Such families are also found in Porto Novo, Benin's capital city. The Portuguese were here at home. For it seems, the town reminded them of Porto. Thus, they named it Porto Novo in 1752. Porto Novo was an ancient kingdom. Today, it remains a rather historic city or a city museum. Porto Novo, it is Benin's memory. You'll find royal palaces including the one of King Telford I in the city, old buildings in the looser Brazilian style, treasures in the various museums, the National Library, and many other sites, some as interesting as the others. Now, I suggest you go northward into Benin, precisely to Abome, another historic city. But on the way, two stops are important. The first is that of Gambier, the lake village. It is the most visited site. I would say that it is the greatest site of Benin. People go to Gambier to escape, to dream, and to share moments of pleasure with very friendly people especially, especially when you put your cameras away. In the beginning, I told you that this country is small but great. Well, Evidences of this are not what miss. Here is another one. Toussaint Louverture, the first black general in the French army, the liberator of Haiti, the first of blacks in the land of the white. He is Beninis, precisely from Alida, an old historic city founded around the 14th century. The founders of the kingdoms of Portunovo and Abome originally departed from this city. Welcome to Obome, the city of King Beelza, the fierce opponent to the French penetration into Dahomey. Going to Obome is tantamount to trading the sacred land of Amazons, these fearsome women warriors who gave trouble to French troops. This museum, established as heritage site by UNESCO, was their palace. Here, you will see thrones of kings, tombs of some of them, their clothes, weapons, and other utilitarian objects. The guide will tell you that Abome had a powerful army, the best organized of its time, and he will not have lied to you. The archaeological village located 9 kilometers from Abome tells a lot about the war strategy of that army. On the same latitude, east side, you can visit Ketu, the Oduduwa community. This old Yoruba kingdom was founded by the eldest son of King of Ileife. Ileife is a town in Nigeria. The biggest site of Ketu is two magic doors, a male and a female. They have incredible supernatural powers that would be tedious to enumerate here. We now turn to the heights of Benin. Let me tell you right away that it has nothing to do with the Kilimanjaro. These are hills and mountain ranges proportional to the size of the country. Have a look at those of Dasazume. At the foot of one of them, a Mary's Grotto was constructed since 1954 because it was believed the place looks like Lourdes in France. Formerly, these hills were actual shields of fortresses against invaders. That break was well worth a transition to the main course. Silence then, for the mouth that eats does not talk, it savors.
You've seen in sequence the falls of Tanugu and Kota and the beautiful landscape of Atakura that the camera has some trouble showing at perfection. Now, you're in the 100% natural park of Penduri. It is the largest and most populated with wildlife in the western part of Africa. The Tata Samba. What an architecture! These castles, built usually in the shade of a baobab tree, were invented by Otamari people to protect themselves against aggressors. At the entrance, you have the protective deities. The ground floor is the domain of domestic animals. In the meantime, men live on the floor next to their attics. I won't forget to give you a snapshot of Paraku, the metropolis of the north, the hometown to the first president of Benin. It's also a former kingdom. Its market is one of the largest of Benin. Paraku is renowned for its tasty pole cheese. This big red cheese is known as Wagasi. It can be eaten crude, fried or cooked in any sauce. Paraku is also known as the town of Nyams. Nyams are the main food in northern Benin. What else to tell you about this small but great country? Oh, I almost forgot. When coming to Benin, just take with you what is really needed. Once in the country, you can do all banking operations as if you were in New York. As for hotels, don't mention them. There are five stars, four, three, even two stars. You can find them from south to north and from east to west. Here, in the Latin Quarter of Africa, the saying goes that there's something available for all tastes and all budgets. I am going to stop here for today, because in Benin, we do not take the whole arm when somebody holds out his hand to us. Similarly, we do not go to the bedroom directly when we are admitted into the living room. The lesson is never to abuse people's generosity. Thanks for your attention and see you soon.